I say all you need, it's quite inconvenient actually. And then replace it with your new one. Here is the new fuel filter. I want to come out. Oh, hey, hey, there we go. What's going on everyone? Good morning, it is Adam from Green Auto Services and welcome to a new video. Today we have a 2016 Ford Transit Custom, a super popular commercial vehicle. Uh, now today it's in for an MOT and its annual service. Now already it's been MOT'd, um, it's passed with no advisories uh, fortunately, so the customer's gonna be happy with that. So the purpose of this video is to show you how to carry out all the standard maintenance items on a service. We're gonna get into it very, very shortly. Before we do though, there is is one thing I would like to say. The channel so far is doing incredibly well and I am really happy to say we are now over 300 uh, subscribers and multiple likes. Now, compared to a lot of videos, it's probably small for other people, but for me, this actually means a lot. So this is a massive thank you to everyone watching, subscribing, liking, or even just passing me a comment. All the positive uh, comments that I'm receiving is just pushing me to do more and more. So a massive thank you to all of you. So on that note, let's not uh, waste any more time. Let's uh, crack on with the video and I'll show you guys exactly how to change all the standard maintenance items on an annual service. Okay, so the very first thing I'm gonna show you, um, I wouldn't normally show uh, you this, however, this has eluded a lot of people. Um, normally, you have a lever to release the bonnet from inside the vehicle. That's common sense pretty much for most vehicles these days. Uh, however, with the Fords, they kind of started off with this technique, went away from it, and then seemed to have come back for it for their commercials. I'm not sure why, but if you ever need to open up the bonnet, all you need is your, I say all you need, it's quite inconvenient actually, all you need is your ignition key and you wanna go down to your bumper where you've actually got like a rubber cover um, for basically a lock. And you just wanna put the key in and it actually shows you on its one, which is step one, turn the key to the left. That'll pop the bonnet open and then whilst lifting up the bonnet, turn it to the right to take off the secondary latch and lift the bonnet up. And there we are, it's as easy as that, but quite annoying if I'm honest. Okay, so here we are up at the engine bay. Now the very first thing I wanna do, purely because the engine is nice and hot, the oil's nice and hot, everything's up to temperature, I want to drain the oil whilst everything is hot. It will just make draining the oil um, a lot uh, easier and it will actually allow more of the oil and more of the contaminated oil, more importantly, to flow out. So the only thing we need to do so far being up here in the engine bay is just to take the cap off the filler nozzle. There we are just so we can allow air to go into the engine while we drain it out. So just for draining the oil, that's literally all you need to do up here. So let's get the vehicle up and get the oil drained out. Okay, here we go. So I've got the vehicle up in the air. Now before I drain the oil, I'm only gonna show you something really, really quickly. Uh, so don't worry, the oil will still drain out absolutely fine at its temperature. Um, if you're ever using a trolley jack, if you think you're gonna do a service on these vehicles on the floor, it's always a good idea to know where the jacking points, or at least the best jacking points are on these vehicles. Because you've got to remember, this is, well, on the MOT brake testers, this measured at 2.15 tons. So it's a heavy vehicle. And if you're gonna start going, lifting them up on the outer seals here, you're gonna start lifting them. I mean, and you're just probably gonna start hearing some cracking. It might even be okay to a certain extent because actually there is a bit of a double skin up on the seal there. But I kind of recommend to stay away from that. If you are desperate, you can try it, but if you hear any uh, cracking or anything, stay away from it. So what I've done now, although I've got the convenience of a ramp, the arms I've actually put under the subframe bolts. Um, you can, if they reach, you can put it anywhere on this subframe. This is a solid supporting structural part, um, which is absolutely fine to lift from. So one of the bolts holding in the subframe is there. The other side is there as well. Coming to the back of the vehicle, if you need to lift the back, I've actually got this underneath the rear uh, leaf spring mount. It is super solid and that is the best place to mount it from. Now obviously when you lift it up, the leaf spring will come down slightly, but um, it won't impede. If you can just see in there, it's not even touching it. All right, but um, worst case scenario, you can always go straight up on the chassis here as well. But do you know what? For belts and braces, always go on these rear leaf spring mounts. And there we are on the other side as well. 
belts and braces. Once you've got the vehicle jacked up, please always use wheel chocks and, um, oh, what do you call them? Axle stands. Isn't that funny how sometimes words just fly out your head? Yes, if you're jacking up a vehicle, always use axle stands, always use wheel chocks. All right, so let's get back to draining out that oil. All right, so uh, before we drain the oil out of the sump though, um, we can always go ahead and replace the oil filter. Now, well done Ford, this is super cool. You've put it in a really accessible place and they're super easy to get to. So let me just spin you around and I'll show you exactly where they are. You wanna come straight underneath the vehicle and right at the front here, this is your oil filter. A nice big spin on metal canister. So in this case, we just need a pair of pliers to go around that and actually twist it off. And it's a uh, left to undo, right to do up. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. So here I have a pair of oil filter wrenches. You can pick this up at your local hardware store. They are really cost effective. I think this one was probably no more than 10, 15 quid, something like that. Excellent to have in your box of tools. And all you literally want to do is grab it round the base. Okay, that's super tight. Oh. God, someone didn't want this coming off. Okay, there we go. That's your oil filter right there. You can dispose of that one and then we'll get the new one out and get it prepped to go back in. So just bear in mind that um, actually there are coolant pipes going to the oil cooler and a wiring harness above and to the side of the oil filter. So when taking it off, just be careful that you're not um, damaging those in any way. So if you do damage those, it could potentially be quite a costly repair. Okay, so here is the new filter. Now, this is a man filter, um, and according to the manufacturer's specifications, the part number for this particular one is W, so whiskey for W7034. These are super, super common and fit most Ford vehicles, but um, wherever you're getting it from, the supplier or directly from the manufacturer, just make sure 100% it is the correct one. So, let's get this prepared, and all we're gonna do is get a little bit of oil and just base it round the seal of the oil filter. That way, as it goes on, it slides on smoothly and doesn't catch on any dry parts and potentially compromise the seal. And that is why we always put oil or some sort of lubricant on the end. Okay, so there is the top of the oil filter. That is a dry seal. We're just gonna get a little bit of engine oil. Just gonna coat it around the seal. And that's all you literally need to do. You don't need to go mad at all but that will just stop the seal potentially from crimping up when you're screwing it on. So it actually turns out I have the oil filter cap. Um, you can, again, you can, this is really easy to come by. You can buy it online, local hardware store. Amazon, to be fair, is probably the best way to go. Hope you can see I'm kind of working backwards here. And all this literally does is slide over the grooves at the very base of it, and then you can use um, a 3 8 to tighten that up to the correct torque settings. So once you've got the oil filter wrench on there and you've got your 3 8 uh, torque wrench, hopefully, this oil filter needs to be tightened to just 15 newton meters. Doesn't sound a lot, but that is what the vehicle manufacturer states. So. Okay, there we go, all done. And then with some brake cleaner, clean down any excess oil.
And now we've done the oil filter, now we need to drain the rest of the oil. It's all sat here in the sump, you're going to need a 13mm socket to undo the sump plug bolt. And word of warning, this particular engine takes 9.8 litres of oil, so do be prepared to catch a lot when you undo it. Okay, that's pretty much now getting to a steady trickle, but we are going to leave it to drain. What I'm now going to do off camera is just do the rest of my service checks, um, and then we'll come back to this when we've got pretty much no more oil dripping out. Okay guys, so the, here is the sump plug. Now, like I said, off camera, I've done all my service checks, uh, taking the wheels off, check the brakes, all the tyres, everything like that. Um, so the oil is now uh, got to a point where it's just dripping, so now we need to make sure we clean up and replace uh, the sump plug and the washer. So this is the washer that came out, and if you've seen the Land Rover Discovery service, you'll uh, spot that this is uh, the exact same sump plug. It's very, very common used uh, in multiple engines. Um, so like I said, we just want to replace this rubber washer. Um, so you just want to get a small pick, mind you don't pick yourself, and you just want to gently take it off. There we go, oh, that's gone, oh, I'll get that in a bit, and out of my stock, now, I do have a new washer, let's get you zoomed in on that, now the reason why I'm showing you this is actually you've got to be a bit careful because there are two different styles of these rubber washers, and you want to make sure you fit the right one, now, um, looking at the sump plug, all you want to do is just put it over and make sure it goes over nice and smooth, now, I do know actually before pushing that on, this is the correct one. This one um, I think is used in some Vauxhall, Opal or Saab sump plugs uh, where it just sits down a little bit more snug. So this one we are not going to use and this one we are. So you just want to thread that over the top and this is where you want to be careful. Just push it down to the base and then just double check and ensure that the, uh, the rubber does protrude slightly higher than the base of the sump plug washer because then when that screws in, that'll clamp up against the sump and create a perfect seal. And that's all you need to do. So let's get this back in the sump. Okay, as you can see, it is now, uh, the oil is now drained out to a steady drip. So um, I am more than happy with that. So you just want to get the sump plug and just start it off by hand because you don't want to ever cross thread anything. And you can even go as far as just nipping it up by hand. Now these sump plug bolts are tightened to the vehicle's manufacturer specifications of 39 newton meters. Okay, so I've now done everything, got the wheels back on, all the server checks were all done. The vehicle is now back down on the floor. We just need to now put some fresh oil in here. Now, just to let you know, there are two variants of this engine, or at least I think only two. Um, and the reason I'm telling you that is because there's different capacities of oil that the engines will take. And there's uh, one way to tell which one's which. So if you remove the dipstick, which is just underneath the air intake here, um, if you have a yellow handle or a yellow tip dipstick, um, sorry to say, it takes the most amount of oil, which is 9.8 litres, but if this dipstick uh, handle is grey, then it takes a little bit less, 8.3 litres. Um, unfortunately, this is the, uh, the larger capacity engine, so we're going to have to put more oil in it. Um, and just to forewarn you guys, for these particular engines that take nearly 10 litres with specific high grade oil, it does cost you a fair bit. So. Bear that in mind, because oil is expensive. It's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is at the moment. Um, so, I'm gonna put this dipstick back down. There we go. And then using the oil filler cap, which is just up here, um, we're now gonna fill it up with 9.8 liters of fresh oil. Okay, here we go. So, 
these modern Euro 6 engines need a very high quality specific oil grade. In this particular respect, we are using a Zero W30 Eco FE Plus. Make sure you double check 100% with your vehicle manufacturer um, exactly which grade of oil goes in here. Uh, there are slightly different variants, but this is the particular one which I am only happy to put in this particular engine. Um, so, Let's get this put into a flexible spout jug so I can get it in the really small hole that they like to give us um, to fill the engine up with so much oil. Um, once again, forward. Cheers for that. Okay, I take it back. This is actually filling up quite quickly. It's not a slow fill nozzle uh, like some vehicles, like Nissan's for example. The, uh, the oil filler cap doubles up as the uh, dipstick. And if you're ever filling one of them up, you're gonna be there for a long time. And uh, similar that to the, uh, some of the other commercial vans like the Vauxhall Vivaros, um, Nissan Prime Stars, they all have really slow filling oil spouts and they take a lot of oil. So you are gonna be there a while, your arms are gonna be hanging in the air whilst filling it in. You're gonna get lactic acid, it's gonna be painful and you're gonna be there for a while. But actually, again, I take it back forward. You may have failed on the bonnet release, um, but this is filling up quite quickly. So I'll let you off. Okay, there we go. So I've just put the last of the 9.8 liters. Well, to be fair, I had two five liter tubs um, ordered in and I've actually put all 10 liters in. 0.2 of liters is not gonna make a uh, busting lot of difference at all. Just pop that back in. He says. There we go. Okay, there we are, that's all back together. What I wanna do now is start the engine, get all the fresh oil, run around the engine, filling up the oil uh, filter as well, and then we'll let it settle down after we turn it off and then see where we are level-wise on the dipstick. Okay, so I've let the engine run and let the oil circulate around the engine for about maybe 10 to 20 seconds, which is more than enough. Um, when you do start up the vehicle, just keep a close eye on the instrument cluster. You wanna make sure that your oil light that comes on um, with the ignition goes off very shortly after um, the engine has started. If it doesn't, after about maybe a few seconds, 10 seconds, turn the engine off and just double check your oil level. So remember, we've put 10 litres in this. Okay, it is very difficult to see. Let's get you zoomed in here, hopefully. Uh, come on. Okay, there we go, right, there we go. So, do you know what? This is really difficult to see, but on the dipstick, there are tiny holes drilled in there, and all of them are covered. And although it looks like it might be all the way, oh, let's get you. It's so difficult working backwards. You can probably tell that we've got oil remnants all the way up here on the, on the dipstick, but that's not the case. It's very difficult to see on camera, but the level is just shy of maximum. So as the engine oil level settles down, that will be bang on maximum. So I am more than happy with that. Okay. And it's as easy as that. That is the oil change, all done. Okay guys, so now the oil filter is all done, um, we still have a couple of other filters to go. Now, according to the vehicle's manufacturer's service, uh, this vehicle is only due a, um, an oil change and a cabin filter. We will get to the cabin filter in just a moment, um, but due to a further conversation I've had with the customer and a couple of potential running issues, we are actually gonna replace the fuel filter as well. Um, so considering we're changing all the filters but the air filter, I thought the air filter was quite easy to get out, so I'm just gonna show you how to quickly change it, although in this video, we're not changing it. So, this is how you change the air filter on one of these Transit Customs. First of all, you wanna take the um, Jubilee clip off the side 
of the air filter here. Off. Let me get you zoomed in. And then whilst you're here, you want to disconnect the mass airflow sensor off the top there. Just push the tang down and pull it out. You've got a breather pipe just over here where you want to push in the two black tangs on either side and pull away. And then you've just got a series of plastic hooks which ping back to allow you to lift the cover off and out. So this now exposes your air filter and as you can see it's quite large. So you just want to gently pull that out and then replace it with your new one. Now flipping this one over, yeah, as expected, this is not that bad at all, which is absolutely fine. This has still got some miles left in it. So we're just going to pop that back in because that will last at least another year. And then you want to put it back together in the same way you took it off. So, the back of this air box actually has a series of plastic brackets that locate into holes at the back, so you want to make sure you get them lined up. There we go, you'll feel it hook in, push the top down, and then just re-secure these plastic catches. Don't forget the breather pipe, just, it's just a push fit. When you hear the click, that's fine. Mass airflow sensor, back on. And then lastly, pipe back on the end and tightening up the Jubilee clip. Okay, and that's how you replace the air filter. Let's now get the vehicle back up in the air because we're now gonna replace the fuel filter which is located underneath the vehicle behind the engine. Um, so there is a drain plug on here so you can drain out the fuel before you uh, unscrew the bottom of the housing here. So that shouldn't be too tight. If we just start to undo that, we can let any residual fuel drain out. There we go. And again, just like the oil, once that gets to a steady drip, we'll then do that back up and then undo the bottom of the housing. Okay, there we are. And after just a few more moments, that has obviously stopped draining. So now what you need is a 32 mil socket just to place on the end here. Um, you can put the drain plug back in, it just stops it from dripping anymore whilst you undo it. So we're just gonna pop that back in. Now there is actually a specific socket you can buy, um, which is a standard 32 mil socket, but it has a cutout at the side, so you can locate it deeper onto the recess here to be able to get it off without potentially slipping. But I'm kind of hoping we're gonna be all right without it. Oh, okay, there we go. Now it is super tight. Be fair, I wouldn't mind having that specialist socket because you do have to keep it square. I'm not sure I'm doing it. God. Now these are tight and then all of a sudden they'll just go. Okay, just keep on screwing. Okay, that's got to a point now where I can just undo that by hand. Now there's still gonna be residual fuel, just let that drain out. Kind of defeats the purpose of the drain plug really, but hey ho. There we go, and then that just comes straight out. There we go. And to be fair, that is looking quite swollen actually. I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of all a bit distorted and a bit swollen. So it's probably a good reason to replace that out regardless. And it could be the underlying issue of maybe he's having some intermittent running issues, but we'll soon find out. Okay, so here is the new 
fuel filter. Now, this is how it comes as one whole piece. This is how I've just taken it straight out of the box. So it comes with a new uh, filter, new bottom housing, um, just to screw straight up where it comes with a new drain plug, which is already tightened up. You don't need to do anything with this. All you literally need to do is screw it up in there. Um, however, saying that, the only thing you do need to do is just get yourself um, a little bit of fuel which is dripping out just to coat the outer seal just so it goes in nice and easy. Same principle as the oil filter but we're using fuel rather than oil. Okay now before I start screwing it in I'll just bring your attention to a tang which is on the end of the housing there. Basically, you can't misfit this. As long as you start the thread correctly, you just keep screwing it in until that tang meets another flat part on the housing and comes to a complete stop. That way you know that the uh, new filter is in there and secure. Okay, so it did actually get a little bit tight just about getting towards the end, but I will just take you up and show you just there at the end of my finger. There we go, end of my finger is where that little lip meets the other part of the lip and stops on the housing. So once that gets there and you can see it's nice and flush, that is the fuel filter successfully installed. Okay guys, so we have now installed the fuel filter. Now it's time to prime it as best we can before starting the engine. So we need to clear out any uh, air that's gonna be in there. So um, I'm now in the cab, as you can tell. And what we're gonna do is, just like the last video with the Land Rover Discovery, we're gonna just cycle the ignition on and off. So key on, engine off. Okay, and we're just gonna cycle it maybe four, five, six times, um, and then start the engine. So this is what I want you to do. So what this is doing is every time you cycle the ignition, the fuel pump is pumping the fuel through the system all the way up to the engine. Um, and then once that's done a few times, hopefully there'll be enough fuel in the system so that when you turn the engine over, the high pressure pump will take over, increase the pressure and fire the engine. Now it is quite a big fuel filter uh, that we've installed, so it's probably gonna take a few cycles to do. And if it does fire, that'll be great news. But if it doesn't, then we will have to siphon some air out of the system and get it bled manually. Right, okay, so I've cycled the ignition probably 10 times now actually, so I'm gonna uh, turn it over and hopefully this fires. Nearly, so close. Let's try one more time, that's probably up there now. Okay, awesome stuff, there we go. So, it will crank over for quite a while, but um, obviously as you can tell, it has fired. Uh, that is quite typical um, of when you do most fuel filters on diesel engines, um, or fuel filters, even on petrol for that matter. Um, they're just a little bit more uh, temperamental with diesel engines. So you wanna leave the engine running for about maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, that's all it will take. As long as it's running constantly and not cutting out, you'll be absolutely fine. Okay, there we are. So the engine is running absolutely fine, um, and it's not cutting out, so everything is all good. Uh, you may still find though that on a couple of startups, particularly on the cold mornings or first thing, um, it may still struggle a little bit, but that is absolutely fine. That's to be expected it will still be continuing to bleed any kind of air out the system regardless of how minor um, but it will get better as long as it starts and the engine runs you're golden so on that note we are on to our last maintenance item which is the cabin filter now this is the filter that filters all the air from the outside coming into the cab now forgive me forgive my customer here he is a gardener so his vehicle is a little bit how should we say the wrong side of tidy um, but uh, I'm going to show you exactly where the cabin filter is and they're super, super easy. Let me spin you around. So you want to go straight to the glove box 
pull the glove box open. Now there are a couple of rubber tangs on the inside of either side, if that makes sense, that stop the gearbox from fall, uh, gearbox, that stops the glove box from coming out. So what you want to do, you kind of want to just push at the back here inwards to allow the rubber to come forward and do the same with the other side, push it inwards to allow it to come inwards and allow the whole glove box to drop forward. Um, you might want to give it a bit of a sharp pull, but there we go, it will happen. There we go. See, they're the locators there that sit behind the side of the glove box and the other one is just down there as well. Okay, so here we are in the glove box. With the glove box down, this is where you have your internal blower motor. And just up here, this is actually a compartment that you can just take off. So on the right hand side, there's just a tab you want to pull towards you and then pull the whole door open. Unhook that, put that to one side. And in there is your cabin filter. And you just want to grab that, and gently pull it out, just like so. Now there is a shape to this. So it does go in a particular way. It doesn't want to come out. But hey ho, there we go. And then here we are, I have the new one. This kind of has a diagonal cutout, which is orientated this way up. So it goes into the back to the left. So you just literally want to slide that in. Just get it past the lip, there we go. And you'll also see that although it can't be fitted any other way around, it is correct because it does say there, airflow going down through the cabin, down through the motor and towards the center console. And then you just want to get your little door, hook it into the left, and then listen out for the clip. There we go, I don't know if you heard it, but that clipped in, and that is solid. Take, get your torch out of the way, and then fortunately this just takes a bit of brute force, and then that is now back in place. And that is how you do the cabin filler. Okay, and there we have it guys, all done for the day. That is how you carry out and change all your maintenance items on a Ford Transit Custom. Um, so by means, this is definitely something you can do at home. Um, save yourself some pennies, give it a shot. It's not overly difficult at all. But by means, take your time, make sure the parts are correct, and make sure all your tightening specifications are correct as well. But thank you so much once again for anyone and everyone who was watching this video. Like and subscribe. Please don't hesitate if you haven't already liked and subscribe. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button because it is you guys that keep me going. Thank you so much indeed. Really appreciate all your time and support. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you guys in the next video.